This is Vesper HBT and Rich Pete here. We're doing some testing on some different makeup of coils. The first coil, which is A, which is 53 feet and 80 turns, it is a little bit thicker coil and a little bit different design. So we're mimicking some different designs. Um, the next one is our 9 feet and it's B uh, and it's 18 turns. And that coil there is, again, a different makeup. So we're a little bit thinner on size. And, of course, the footage is different, a little bit different design. What we're doing is fine-tuning the design so that we can articulate the magnets to the design of the coil after we've maximized in be the benefits of the coil. So our next one is going to be C, which is 8.5 feet, and it is 18 turns. Um, so you can see the thickness there is a little bit different as well. Now, our thinnest coil, which is D, and the final test that we'll do is only 10 feet and 18 turns. So it's the same turn rating between D, C, and B. However, the footage is different. So you have 9 feet, 8.5, and 10 feet. But this is our thinnest coil, as you can see here. It's uh, basically only about 1 mil thick. This one here is about 2.5 mils thick. This one here is about 8 mils thick. And this one here is about 12, about 12 to 14 mils thick. So that's what... All right, this is test A. You'll remember our test rig here. Um, I do want to show you this meter right here. This was on the other videos as well. This is actually telling us how much power the AC motor is drawing. So you'll notice the change in, in the motor. Um, if there is any voltage or amperage change, it will be indicated here. Um, can, again, our two meters. This meter on this side is our amperage meter. This meter on this side is our voltage meter. You can trace the wires back here, all the way back to our wiring jig here. And you can see where our wires come out, and they go to our load source. Same bulb that we were using before. Then our wires come out, they come over to the coil. Our first coil to test is coil A. So we're going to get that started now. So I got our meter set, voltage, and AC, amperage, and AC. As you can see, coil A is producing 5.7 volts and 2.6 amps with load. So that is an under load speed. I'm just going to come around and just show you the back side of the rotor. So you can see that there's nothing going on. But it is being held in place just by hand and fingertips only. We're going to do the next test. I uh, will show you here, this is the voltage going into the motor and the amperage, and Rich is going to take the coil away and show you that it did not change. And he'll go ahead and apply it back. And you can see that that did not change. And so he's going to take it away, and he'll put it back. All right, well, guys, we're doing test B. Again, same setup. Just going to flip the power switch on here. Let it come to rest. You'll see the voltage here and the amperage of the AC motor. Now we're going to engage the test here.
So you'll see this coil is 1.9, almost 2 volts, and 1.6 amps. And it is under load. It's going to take the coil away. You'll see everything zero back out and then reapply. Right, we'll move on to the next test. All right, guys, next test is coil C, which is 8.5 feet and 18 turns. Just going to go ahead and get that kicked off here. And put the power switch on. We'll let it come to rest here. All right. And then he's going to go ahead and apply it here. And you'll see the voltage on this one a little bit different. Got a 1.3 volt. And 1.48 amps. So not too bad for that little coil. Alright, we'll get you next one. Alright guys, last test is our final coil, which is of a uh, different design, more new, uh, more calibrated. The footage is 10 feet and the turns is 18. And remember, this is our uh, 1 mil thick coil, so it's a little bit different. Uh, just going to fire that up now. Okay, we'll let that come to rest there. All right. Going to apply it there. And you'll see that we have about 2.2 uh, volts. And 1.7 amps. And all of these tests are under load. So you can see our little light bulb right here glowing. Just kind of shading the light up above here a little bit so you can see the meters exactly. So there he is holding that uh, coil there. And then he'll take the coil away. And then reapply it for you. So there again are the meter results and meter setting for you. Right. So our next set of tests will be short out coil tests. All right, guys. So here's what we have. Um, our wiring is set up as it was when it came off, but we have uh, disconnected the light bulb from our actual power sources coming over. So that's what this is. It's shorted through the amp meter. So you're going to see the shorted amps coming out of the coil. This again is going to be the voltage. This meter is not used right now. So we are not using this meter. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it off. So our final connection is this connection to here. Now what we have to do is since this was our old amp meter and we're going to use this amp meter as our shorted meter, we're going to move this wire from where that amp meter was. All right, so here's the wiring pattern that uh, that we have finished here. Um, so you can see where it's been tightened down here and trace those all the way around to here. Follow it up past our bulb that has been disconnected up here to our meter. And again, this is going to be set in AC so that this is going to test the shorted power coming off of the coil. In other words, the maximum amount of power that this coil can produce with the maximum amount of voltage that the coil can produce. So we'll go ahead and get this started now. There we go, it's all tightened down. We're going to start off with A as far as coil, and we'll go ahead and kick this off. All right, so you can see our maximum output in amps is 9 amps out of the coil. 1.4, 1.5 volts, and that's holding the coil straight up against. I'm just holding the wire in place with my finger because it likes to slide out, but there you go. Good. Okay, so here's our next test, which is B, and again, this is the full shorted out test. 
going to go ahead and kick this off. Now what I want to show you here is the uh, bolts and amps again. I'm going to kind of turn so that you can see those and he's going to uh, put that right up against the coil and you'll see that they don't change. Just turning the voltmeter back on, it reset itself. Alright, so you can see if that hasn't changed, we'll go up here. So that I've shorted out amps and shorted out bolts. And then I'll show you that there's hardly any lens because you just hang it onto the paper basically on the coil up against the rotor. And I'll show you the bolts and amps one more time. And straight down here to show you that the amperage draw for the motor has not changed from what we started with. Alright, so here's our next test, which is coil C. And again, um, it, we have our shorted out results here. So I'm just going to back up so we can kind of see all the meters and everything all at once. Turn this on. You can see our shorted out bolt is about six, six amps and 0.84 volts because we are pulling as many amps out of the coil as we can. So we'll go on to the next step. All right, so here's our final test, which is coil D once again. And uh, same test with our meters and that. I'm just going to back up, flip it on, and we'll go ahead and give it a test here. So as you can see, that one's producing about 9.8, 9.9, almost 10 amps, and 1.3 volts. There you go, 10 amps. 1.35 volts, and you'll notice that the amp draw and voltage on the AC motor has not changed. I'm going to zoom in here and just show you it's just being held by fingertips and barely on the paper. And there's our voltage and amperage once again. And I'll come down here. And he'll take the coil away and show you that that uh, voltage has not changed. And he just reapplied it there.